Okay, today is July the 24th, 2020, and uh, this is uh, the second video I'm going to make on this uh, SE amplifier, this uh, single-ended triode amplifier running the, uh, the, the 300B right here. And this is LT Spice. This is a really good place to start. It, once you get used to it, drawing this circuit out is about a 15 or 20 minute job. It's actually not that hard. The learning curve is a little steep in the beginning if you're not familiar with it, but uh, there you go. You, you, you got to be committed to make this thing uh, work and understand it. But anyway, here it is. Okay. Uh, we're going to run it like this. I'm going to show you all the analysis you can do with it, the, how you can change components and analyze it. It's just absolutely wonderful. This is pretty much, I don't know if this is exactly how I got it off the internet, and I'm certainly not criticizing any, any of the schematic that I got off the internet, but I want to run it. Uh, this I put in over here, I like this over here, I like a 22K resistor right here as a grid stopper. Uh, there is a critical point of this uh, grid being uh, its resistance to ground, I think it's called a Miller effect, I'm not sure if that's the correct term or not, where this thing can burst into uh, parasitic oscillation. So you want to keep the resistance of this uh, grid sort of high, and 22K does a good job. You got to have a resistor out here to ground because I've got a blocking capacitor here to keep DC off of it. The, this input right here is called a high pass filter. Okay, what I'm doing is I'm stimulating this thing with a sine wave. This first zero right there says that there's no DC offset. The 0 0.2 says that I'm driving at 200 millivolts and I'm going to be driving at one kilohertz. 6S and 7, so I got the 470 um, uh, ohm uh, cathode resistor. This right here, the, this part right here, the, the first two stages, U1 and U2, are basically a, um, a Williamson circuit. Uh, see, it's got a 22K here and a 22K there, but we're just not going to be using the signal off of the cathode because we're not going to be driving push-pull. We're going to be driving single-ended, and we bypass that with a capacitor. The beautiful thing about this is you can change any of the components you want and re-simulate and get a, get a pretty a realistic uh, outcome. What's going to happen when you build it? Okay, let's, uh, let's, let's get to the business and start simulating. There's a lot of work to be done here. Okay, first of all, we're going to do a, a transient analysis. I'm just going to do it for 50 milliseconds. That'll be our display. Okay, now what we'll do first is we'll look at our uh, input signal. See the little uh, probe down there, the little red probe right there at the beginning? I'm going to double click on that, and that's what our input signal looks like. If you look over here at the very left side, see where the little comb is right now? Actually, it's a little ruler. It says it's zero millivolts right in the middle, and it goes to plus 200 millivolts and minus 200 millivolts, because that's what we specified right here in the 0 0.2. And if you don't like that, you can just you could grab it, and then you can just look at a few a, a few cycles of it. Okay? But let's simulate it again so we see the whole thing. Okay, so that's what it looks like there. That's what it looks like there. If you, if you click, uh, I'm going to double click, and then if I click once, I get both displays at once, but they're superimposed on top of each other here. I generally click twice, so I only want to look at one signal at a time. See, if I, double cl if I single click here, See, now I've got both signals, but they're at such a different uh, voltage level that the scale doesn't work. This is my input, this is my output. So I, you can do it however, however way works for you, but double clicking, I want to see just how clean my sine wave is. So it's really nice there. Everything is uh, beautiful. There, it's great. See, that's out of the second stage going into the grid of the 300B. It's perfect. See right over here is its voltage. It goes from about uh, 45 volts to uh, minus 55 volts, plus and minus. It's not exactly symmetrical uh, uh, in amplitude, top and bottom, but we can deal with that. Okay, let's see what it looks like going into the capacitor. That looks good, doesn't it? And uh, out of the capacitor, wow, looks good. But but look at the voltage levels as we go across here. This is what's amazing. Okay. As our input, there's our plus and minus, there's our zero, and there's our plus and minus 200 millivolts. Coming out, now we've got a, a single polarity voltage that goes from like 82 to 89. So we've got like a, 
a 7 volt signal now. So this, this signal right here is 7 volts peak to peak. So we got some amplification out of this stage. Let's look at this one. See, now this one is going from 250 volts to 350 volts. Now we've got a 100 volts swing right here, 100 volts peak to peak at this one. And that's, of course, what's going in there, 100 volts. Okay, now what do we got coming out here? Okay, now it's going from like 280 to almost 640. So we've got a huge swing now across that choke. We got some real voltage on the other side of the capacitor. And it looks good, see? But now, look, on this side of the capacitor, here, here's something to notice. We've got a single uh, a biased voltage. It's all positive. It goes from 280 volts positive to, like say, about 630 volts positive. Now, if you look on the other side of this capacitor, where the inductor is, look what happens. It changes. Look where zero is now. Zero is in the middle. Now it's going about plus 180 volts to minus 160 volts. Now we've got a positive and negative swing. And if we look right here, this is our speaker, our 8 ohm load, which is our speaker. And there it is. It looks, looks pretty darn good. See, it's going to 6 volts and a little bit more than minus 7. We can improve this. Uh, I'm showing you kind of like where, where the uh, initial um, schematic started, but I'm going to show you some improvements we can make and just how easy it is, and it's just absolutely fun in my opinion. Okay, now, since we're doing a transient analysis, we can actually measure power. I'm going to hold down Alt and see how the little temperature, it looks like a thermometer there. I'm going to double click on that. Now, that's our power. And then if I hold down Control and click once on, the, on this uh, uh, up here at the top, that goes to show what our power is. Our power is 3.03 watts. There you go. This, this thing's amazing. Okay, now I've made some changes, and I want to show you what the changes do. Okay, for one thing, I uh, found out that changing this resistor right here, I'm going to right-click on it, and then I'm going to change that 22K to 47K, and then I'm going to run it again. See how it changed the output? Now it, it's a whole lot better. We got a little bit of a funny startup over here, but it sure looks a lot better. Okay, now instead of 10 microfarads, I'm going to change this one to 100 microfarads and run it again. Getting better all the time, huh? So you can go through and you can change any component to anything you want to change it and simulate it, and you know, it doesn't cost you anything. Okay, now let's look at our power. I'm going to hold down uh, Alt and double click that. There's our power. Then I'm going to hold down Control and click once on that, and our power went to 4.9 watts. So we're up at right at 5 watts now. And it sure looks a whole lot better, doesn't it? Uh, my first value of 10 microfarads, I put in there because I have a 10 microfarad capacitor, but it looks like I need a 100. I guess the way I'll get that is by putting uh, two 220 microfarad ones uh, in series. Well, let's just change it again. I haven't gone here yet, but what about if we change this thing to, uh, uh, let's see, if I put two 470s in series, that would give me 235, 235 microfarads. And let's run that. Maybe this thing needs to be huge, or maybe there's such a thing as getting it too big. I don't know. Looks pretty good there. Let's see what it looks like on this side of the capacitor. See, we're swinging between uh, about 220 volts to almost six, about 670 volts. So we got a we got a huge voltage swing there. And there's our zero, and we're swinging to uh, about 200 and maybe 30 plus and yeah, well, that's actually even better, isn't it? But, you know, how far can we, what kind of a limit can we take this to? Now, you see, that right there is a current meter. If I want to measure the current through it, that's what the current looks like through it. Uh, it does, it's got zero, so it's going uh, peaks or plus one amp to uh, a little bit more than minus one amp. And if I hold down Alt and I get the temperature gauge, um, this is looking better. It looks like this capacitor right here needs to be really huge. And then we uh, hold down control and click on this. Now there's our power, 4.9. It didn't change our power output, but I think it actually did improve it a little bit. Okay? Now I'm going to go back to hit to, I'm going to change this one back to 10. 10, you put in U and F. You don't have to put in the F because it knows it's a capacitor, so it knows it's farad. But anyway, uh, 
there we're going to simulate it again see it doesn't look bad but let's go down this is at one kilohertz so let's go down here and sweep it we're going down here and click on this and we're going to change this uh, you put in a semicolon to uh, to take a uh, command out and you put in a dot to make it work oh my god this guy is so hard to see I don't know if I've got that in there or not I may have to um, I think I got a dot and a semicolon yeah let's take make sure that's out and there's a dot there and say okay now I've got two I've got a transient uh, 50 millisecond uh, uh, scan right here and I've got a an AC a decrement this 10 is how many uh, points per decade the other 10 is the starting frequency of 10 Hertz and the 20,000 down here is the ending of 20,000 Hertz now since I've got two when I click on run it'll say well which one do you want to run because you got two and I'm going to click on this one say okay now it's going to run that okay now look at what we've got let's kind of start over here let's go back to the beginning that's the beginning see we have no attenuation in our in our modeled uh, AC source right here that's why that line is straight it should be straight and we double click here and see our attenuation down here at 10 Hertz see this is in millidecibels minus 120 millidecibels to minus 10 millidecibels Excuse me, I've got to uh, uh, halt here for just a second. Okay, we were doing a frequency sweep, and uh, again, I was um, looking at the input straight line. This is right out of the uh, high pass filter. Uh, again, this is in millidecibels, so you know the, the amount of uh, attenuation here is insignificant. So, and then we'll look at the output of the first stage. It's good to go through and look at all of them. See this one, uh, see down here at 10 hertz, it's attenuated from 25.6 to 25.38, so that's insignificant. Even up here at 10 kilohertz, it's still down at on 25.02, so you're still down less than one decibel, so this is nice and flat. Okay, let's look at uh, what goes into the grid of that tube. Uh, that's okay, let's see what's coming out over here on the top of that inductor, and that is really bad. Look at that. We've got a huge anomaly at 20 hertz right there. So this isn't going to work at all. So now what are we going to do? What's causing this? The answer is we don't really know. But we can start tinkering with anything we want. It doesn't cost us anything. First of all, why don't we start over here with this 10 microfarad and make it uh, 20. Just because just we can. And simulate it again. See if it gets any better. Well, that's I guess that's better. But look how sharp it is now. Well, that's about 15 or 16 hertz. That's not going to work. Well, let's just go on up so I won't make the video too long. Let's go on up to, say, 100 uh, microfarads and simulate it. Looks a lot better, doesn't it? So it looks like this capacitor it needs to be really large. I've simulated it all the way up to uh, series in two 470 uh, microfarad capacitors in series, which would give me like... Uh, like 235, 235 microfarads, and then we get that. Well, about the same thing. Not much change between 100 and uh, 200. So 100 microfarads is probably big enough. Let's look at it again. That's on one side. That's on the other. See, nothing changed. That's good. And let's look at our output. And there's our output. It's looking pretty darn good. Now we can't do, we can't make power measurements on a frequency sweep. We have to do just one frequency. But uh, this is our frequency sweep. So at 10 hertz, it's at um, 22 dB, and at uh, so it, it drops off very very sharp over here at 10. But at 20 hertz. Let's see, the whole thing is, is, well, you can actually put this here and, and read down at the very bottom. It's too too tiny to read, but if you can read down at the very, very bottom, way down here. See, it's not displayed now, but when I've got the cursor on the, the line, it says that this line right here is at, um, uh, the way it, is at uh, 33. And at uh, 20 hertz right here, it's at uh, 30 so we're about 3 dB down uh, at 20 Hertz that's actually uh, that's actually pretty good 
we don't have hardly any attenuation at all in the high frequencies. So this is some stuff you can do with LT Spice. It doesn't cost you anything. You can play with this thing for hours. See, I didn't go into the trouble to try to build a uh, power supply down here. I just, I just said a uh, right here, a 440 volt uh, uh, AC or DC source, and I put a, a capacitor off the ground to make sure that I had a uh, uh, path for AC signal around the power supply. You need to do that even in your simulation. I changed this resistor right here from the one out of the, uh, uh, the internet. Pretty much everything else is the same. The 880 uh, ohm resistor is going to set the bias. I changed this one right here I believe. Uh, this the 470 cat. I don't remember what they had it. But anyway you can go through and you can play with all of these values and see we can just change this thing back to 100 microfarads. 100 type in U and you don't have to put the F, but I do, because like I say, it's a it's a capacitor, so it knows it's in farads. Like if you like this 880 right there, you don't have to put 880 ohms. It's a resistor, so it knows its resistance and it knows it's in ohms. So uh, there you go. Now all I got to do is build it, which is really not that big a deal. And if we want to go back to some uh, transient analysis. What am I doing here? Let's see. Let's click on that. Well, I don't know. Maybe we need to close that. Let's go back to Tran. Right click. Yeah, I got to right click. Uh, no, that's not what I want to do. Cancel. Let's say I want to run it over here. Let's see. Yeah, I do want to do that. We want to go back to transient. So we want to uh, put take out the semicolon and put the dot in there. Hope I got it in there right. If I did, it'll come up and it'll say which one you want to run. Well, we want to run the transient. We can change that from 50 milliseconds to whatever we want. But let's say here we got a kilohertz in there. Let's change that kilohertz to uh, 100 hertz. So we just take out a zero and uh, simulate it. And again, just kind of start from the beginning. There's our 100 hertz. See, there's zero. There's plus 200 millivolts, minus 200 millivolts. That looks good. Let's see what's coming out of the first stage. That looks good. Let's see what's coming out of that. Really nice and clean. Going into the grid of the, see what's, uh, what it looks like coming out of the plate on the left side of the capacitor at 100 hertz. And getting a little wrinkly there, see. We get a little distortion in there. Let's see what it looks like on the right side. About the same. So it looks like this 100 microfarad capacitor is pretty, pretty uh, transparent. And right here on our output, well, actually from from here, this circuit over here is actually pretty uh, transparent. Now this five Henry and this uh, eight millihenry one is uh, simulating a five thousand ohm to eight ohm. That's a that's a impedance ratio of six hundred twenty five to one, or a voltage ratio of twenty five to one, which is just a pretty standard transformer. That's probably what I'll strap these uh, little. Uh, uh, line transformer part. By the way, here's a line transformer I'll be using. I can pull it out of the box and show you. This little guy right here. If you can see it there. So uh, it's rated at 10 watts. So it should be enough. Now we're, we're getting some distortion out the low end. Not sure what to do about it. Well, I'll tell you what. Uh, why don't we, uh, because we can, why don't we change this guy back to, uh, the, say, 250 microfarads. Let's see if that changes anything. We got to remember that when, when we fix one thing we may screw up something else. So we got to be very careful. It didn't change it at all, did it? Let's change it back to the original value that I started with of uh, 10 microfarads and see what it looks like. Didn't even change that, did it? That is pretty amazing. It didn't change much at 100 hertz. Let's keep this at 100. This is a whole lot easier than going out there and soldering new wires in and all that, all that kind of stuff. Okay, so we know what it looks like at 100 hertz. Well, just because we can, let's go to 30. Let's go to 30 hertz. It's probably going to be pretty horrible. But uh, nothing blows up here. Ooh, that's not good at all, is it? Yeah, let's close this. Let's see if we can um, run it again like that. Well. I need to change the, uh, the time frame on it. 
if I change this 50 milliseconds down here to um, um, let's make it to 200. We don't want to make it too long because sometimes it it draws the trace over and over and over and over again and it gets uh, it gets really kind of lengthy. Yeah, see there's what 30 hertz looks like. You don't want to listen to that. So we may have a problem at low frequencies. Now if we go over here and change this, let's go up to uh, say 15,000. 15,000 hertz, 15 kilohertz. Did I get that right? Yeah. Let's simulate that. Yeah, see that's what happens when the uh, transient uh, uh, value is set uh, too high. Let's set that back down at, um, at 50 or otherwise it's going to draw this thing over and over and over. Sometimes it gets, it gets a little weird. Okay, let's stop it and let's simulate it again. Okay, let's just let's start at the output. There's the output. Even it does that enough too many times. And if you just want to look at just a, a few of the uh, cycles, you just put your cursor up here and you click and hold and you, you expand it out to whatever you want to see and, and there you go. Looks really good. Running plus and minus 8 volts. See, once if we're running transient, we can uh, also uh, go over here with our and, and um, hold down Alt. Click on that. That looks good. And then control and see what our power is, and it's uh, four and a half volt, four and a half watts right there. So it's actually doing pretty good. So anyway, that is a simulation of the amplifier. And you press on the space bar, and it fills up the uh, the screen. And you can roll your uh, your mouse to make it larger or smaller. I kind of like it a little smaller than the space bar. Space bar fills up the whole screen. But it doesn't miss anything. Now you got to build your own. Uh, let me roll it down a little bit. Put this in the middle. You got to build your own uh, uh, transformer over here, so to speak. So here's our choke. That's just a choke of 15 Henrys. But this, I uh, like I say, I I just simulated a 5k to 8 uh, to 8 ohm uh, transformer. So I put in for L25. Henry's and for L3008 uh, Henry's or 8 milli Henry's and then you got to do this thing you got to do this statement up here it's called a coupling factor the K stands for the coupling you got to couple uh, L2 to L3 and the coupling factor is 0. Point, I just put in a bunch of nines 0. 0.9999 I don't think it'll take a 1 because there's naturally going to be some leakage induction so I don't think it'll take a 1 but it may if you change this, actually, uh, very. If you change it to even 0 0.8, if you have a coupling factor of only 0 0.8, it'll it'll actually get pretty weird on you, and uh, it. So you just keep it up really high, and of course you can also uh, let's do this. Let's simulate it again. I think we're doing the uh, transient right now. Let's see what are we doing here. Yeah, what are we doing? 15 kilohertz. Well, let's change that back to. Um, only 1,000, 1, 0, 0, 0, and run it. There we go. There's our kill. Now, let's just change our, our load resistor right here. We don't like that. Let's change it to uh, 4 ohms and see what we get. Well, we're still getting the same amount of voltage across it, actually, which is kind of amazing. So let's go back and uh, there's its power. Looks a little strange there. Uh, I don't think I did that right. Let's hold down Alt and uh, double click that again. There we go. Now hold down Control and click once on this. It says now we're getting seven and a half watts. So we can see we don't have an impedance matching uh, set up like in a, in a in a output transformer that has like a four eight sixteen ohm tap. So it looks like as we lower the um, the load out here, uh, we get more power. You can measure, you can get an FFT display out of this too, and you can also measure the uh, harmonic distortion, but we won't get into that because it'll just get more and more and more. And I'm not as familiar with it as I used to be, so I would have to uh, practice to be fumbling a lot. Let's change this to two ohms just to see what happens and simulate it. 
Well, it doesn't particularly like that, does it, for some odd reason? Well, it's it's not matching this transformer for one thing right now. We we need to change the, uh, the taps on this. But anyway, we're mostly going to be operating it into an 8-ohm load. So let's leave it like that. So this capacitor needs to be up pretty high. 10 microfarads that I showed in the first video is just not going to be high enough. Um, playing with some of these values. I changed this one to 77K. I raised it and lowered it, raised it and lowered it, and I found that that was about right. Uh, 100K hmm, was okay. But if you get it too low, all of a sudden it just really goes weird. If you put it down like at 22K or something like that, it, it just does some really strange things. So there you go. There is the, um, the simulation of... Uh, of a single-ended triode amplifier using the 300B and a 6SN7 driver with LT Spice. I hope this uh, is worth something to you.